Well, what you're looking at there is something that causes $150 million worth of damage annually in Georgia alone and is in every county in the state. We're talking about wild pigs this month and I'm joined by Faith Cruz. Hey, Faith, good to be with you today. Thank you. Faith is having to put up with me today as we talk about wild pigs because Faith, your research at the University of Georgia in the Warnell School of Forestry and Natural Resources is on wild pigs and their behavior. Before we get into that and some of these techniques that you're studying, why study wild pigs? Why look at them? Why understand them? It's a good question. So wild pigs were brought to actually South Florida um, back in 1538. And since then, they've expanded their range to at least 35 states in the US. Mm -hmm. And they are notoriously known for the damage they cause, but also the fact that they can eat basically anything, live basically anywhere. They're habitat and diet generalists. Right and then they have a high reproductive capacity and um, they cause a lot of damage wherever they are. And that damage can be to agricultural crops by rooting up the seeds when they're just in the process of growing or when they are already mature. It can be in the process of spreading diseases to humans and livestock sure. and pets. And then also soil erosion, uh, messing up nutrient cycles in the ground. Even things like predating on reptiles and amphibians mm. or outcompeting native wildlife. I mean, the damages, and, and I want to talk about that. I'm so glad you mentioned things like keystone species, like the gopher tortoise mm -hmm. in South Georgia, what they're doing to that habitat. Yeah. When we talk about controlling these things, Faith, we're looking at a, a corral-style trap. Tell me about this. This is half of it. This yeah. isn't usually how it looks. Yeah, <laughs> they're <laughs> usually <to> <laughs> completely closed. So with um, controlling for wild pigs, there's a couple different ways you can do that. And one is trapping. And we like to emphasize that they are large corral-style traps so you can fit that whole sounder or group of pigs in it. And that's how you effectively control pigs is taking out the whole sounder as opposed to just individual. And one couple things to note with traps is you want to make sure that they are graduated kind of cell sizes mm -hmm. uh, because piglets, they can easily stick through here where they can't get through those bottom ones. Sure. You want to make sure it's about five feet tall because then they won't get over it. Okay. Um, when it comes to the kind of entrance of the trap. Mm -hmm. This is an automatic one, huh? We yes. can do with a phone too? Yes. Wow. So when it comes to entering the traps, you see there's nothing down here. Right. Now, if you can imagine pigs, they spend their whole life without anything like concrete or roads or stuff like that under their feet. So you wouldn't want to walk over top of some type of like bar that's right Makes there sense. here. So you wanna make sure it's completely just natural ground right. when it comes to entering the trap. Right. Um, and then another thing is there's no hard corners of the trap because pigs can escape these things. So you wanna make sure there's, there's no hard corners. And then to eliminate the catch of like uh, non-target species, make sure there's no top to it because if for instance, maybe a bear comes in or a deer, they can easily jump out or climb out. Okay, I was thinking about that. And what I wanna talk about next is when they get into this thing, now what? How are you studying those? And I wanna go there next, so let's do it now. All right, Faith, so we're on the move. Taking a look at all these parts to those traps to hold those wild pigs. And what I really wanna focus on now is this technique called the Judas technique mm -hmm. that you mentioned, and it involves this collar. Yes. Talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, so once you have pigs in the trap, with my project, we're looking to see what type of pig works as the best Judas pig. And just to give you a little bit of a background on what's the Judas technique, because mm -hmm. it's something that not many people have heard of. Sure. It first kind of uh, focuses on social animals, and pigs are very social. And basically, you trap an individual or a sounder of pigs, and then you pick which one of those is the best to use for, for, for being a Judas pig. Okay. And in this case, not much literature has been done, so we don't really know what's the best Judas pig. And I'm going to focus on sub-adults, so 60 to 90 pounds, and I'm looking at females and males. So when it comes to, you know, you've got the trap with wild pigs in it, which one are you going to pick to put the collar on? Yep. First, you're looking at, is it of good quality? So it hasn't hurt itself while in the trap, it's still in good condition, and then also, is it within that 60 to 90 mm -hmm. pounds? Then we remove the other pigs that are in there, put the collar on the designated 
Judas pig, and then we release it back into the environment, and I look at its locations online, because I can see all its points. And that's how we're doing this, with this sophisticated so, wildlife camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is a cellular camera, and once I see online, all right, this pig is hanging out in this one spot, I stick this camera there, and then it, since it's cellular, sends pictures to my phone, and I can see, all right, this pig is with more pigs, or this pig's uh, alone, and it's not with other pigs. And so that's what I'm trying to figure out is which type of pig finds other pigs fastest and then also is seen with the most pigs over time. And how this is a removal method is once you get that pig with other pigs, you tell wildlife services or if you're a land manager, you go out there and you know where the pig's at because of the collar. Right. You remove the other individuals that it's with, and then you let that Judas pig go on and find more pigs. Do it again. And do it again. All right, so keep in mind, this Judas technique is fairly unstudied, and Faith, that's where you come in. Mm -hmm. Collecting this data on those characteristics of that juvenile 60 to 90 pound sub-adult, we're calling it. Sub-adult. When you get that information, where are you going from here with your study? Yeah, so first is collecting all that data, looking at how long it took that Judas pig, once it was deployed with the collar, to find more pigs. Mm. And if I start seeing a trend, maybe the females are the ones that find pigs sooner and they're found with pigs more often, then I'll say, okay, that is the best type of Judas pig. And for future land managers or wildlife services, once we have more studies on this, can confirm that that female is the best Judas pig, they're going to know when you trap a sounder of pigs, choose that sub-adult female, use that as the Judas pig, send it out there, and after X amount of days, you can know that it's with more pigs to then remove. I, to me, that is so interesting, identifying those characteristics and making that prediction mm -hmm. using that data. I don't want to hog up all the time here. <laughs> Faith, thanks so much for spending time with me today. Y'all want to know more about this. Talk to your local county extension agent as we always try to support through the Ranger Nick segment. And while you're online looking up that agent, take a look at the Ranger Nick Facebook page, see what I got going on. We're doing these Warnell wings and things every Friday. So take a look there and see what we got going. Until next time, for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick Faith, as we always say, reminding you at home that enthusiasm is contagious, so pass it on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you right back here again this time next month. See ya.